Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you what you've been asking for, which is how to edit videos for free. I'm gonna be showcasing my process on how I edit my food videos. This is part of the video series where last year I showed you how I create food videos using an iPhone, where I went over what equipment I use for making food videos. And in my second video, I showcased my tips and tricks on how I use an iPhone for making food videos. After those videos, a lot of you asked how I edit my videos, so here it is. Before we get started, consider subscribing subscribing to this channel and hitting that like button. When you hit that like button, it really helps my channel. It tells the almighty YouTube algorithm that this content is great so that it shows it to a lot of people. Before we begin, I recommend that you use YouTube chapters as I'm covering everything from downloading the software to color grading it. So just use the chapters and jump over to the section you are interested the in. The software that I use for editing my food videos is DaVinci Resolve. Unlike Adobe Premiere Pro, this is free to download and free to use. I used to pay $40 a month for using Adobe Premiere Pro until I ran across DaVinci Resolve. It's a no-brainer. It has all the features that all the other editing softwares offer, yet it's free for what I need to do. If you do a quick Google search for DaVinci Resolve, you should be able to find it. Once you're on the website, there are two versions of DaVinci Resolve. There's DaVinci Resolve 17 and DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. For what we need, we only need DaVinci Resolve 17, the standalone by itself. Depending on what system you're using, Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, use the right version. When downloading it, it's going to prompt you to enter some details. Go ahead and enter whatever information you want to enter and then click on download. This current version of DaVinci Resolve is about 2.3 gigabytes. So once the file has been downloaded, you want to right click on it and extract it. It may take a few seconds before the file is fully extracted. Then you want to just double click on the exe file and the installer should pop right up for you. I recommend just using all the defaults that are already clicked for you. Don't check or uncheck anything else. That's how I've been doing it. And then next thing, just hit install. Since I already have it installed on my PC, I'm not going to reinstall it. So moving along, once it's installed, go ahead and launch DaVinci Resolve. And then you should be presented with the DaVinci Resolve launch screen. If you did a brand new install, then all you should see is untitled project and nothing else. Just to show you, I do all my work in DaVinci Resolve. So all the videos that I've edited this year and last year have been done using DaVinci Resolve. So if you're a first time user, just double click on the untitled project and DaVinci Resolve should open up. Just to give you a quick glance at the software, the very first tab on the left is the media screen. That's where you can import your media. The second tab is the cut screen, which I don't use at all. The third tab is the edit screen, which I use 80% of the time. Then we have the fusion screen, which I hardly ever use. And then we have the color grade screen, the audio voiceover screen, and finally the export screen. This is where we finally export and render the file. If you're overwhelmed by this, don't worry. We're only going to be using three tabs. First one is the edit, color grade, and then export for today's tutorial. To showcase how I edit my videos, I'm going to use my onion rings video, which I recently recorded. In order to bring the video into DaVinci Resolve, you can open up your file explorer and drag and drop the file. Once it's dropped in the media section, you can drag the file again and put it on the screen. If you get the following message, and since you're just a beginner, just hit change. I click don't change, but you should click change. One of the most useful features that I use from DaVinci Resolve is marking in and marking out. What this allows you to do is select a portion of the video from the clip and then paste that into the timeline. For example, I have this entire clip, right? But not all of it is useful. I only want this bit from the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is stop the video where I need the clip to start and then click mark in. Then I'm going to play the video and then right where I feel like I want to stop, then I'll just click on mark out. Once that's done, my clip has been selected and I can just drag and paste that into my timeline. And that's how easy it is to mark in and out in DaVinci Resolve. Just to show you again, here's another example from another clip. I'm marking in from one part of the clip and right there, I'm going to stop and mark out and I'll go ahead and just grab the video and put it in my timeline. Once it's done, here's what my timeline looks like. So far, I only have two clips now. A real quick note, you should see two screens in DaVinci Resolve. The one on the left is your source screen or your source video. The right video screen is the actual timeline, what is going to get rendered out when you export this. Another way of trimming your video is by using the blade edit mode. So for example, I have this long timeline, right? And from this timeline, I want to trim out the pieces that I don't want to use. I only want to show right when I'm about to put in the onion ring into the oil fryer. So for this, I'm going to click on the edit tool 
Then I'll go ahead and go to my timeline and then just click right where I need to cut the video. Then I can just delete the part that I don't need and it's gone. To delete, just hit the delete key on your keyboard. It's pretty basic and self-explanatory, I hope. After using the edit tool, I was able to focus in on the areas where I was about to fry the onion and then take it out from the fryer. So that's where I mainly use this tool. The next item I would like to show is the zoom in and zoom out feature. For example, here's the same shot. The one on the left is original and the one on the right is zoomed in 1.4 times. This really comes in handy when you're trying to focus in on an object or subject or in my case, trying to hide some boxes in the back. To do this step, the very first thing you need to do is select the video file that you're gonna zoom into. Once you have done that, go in the top right hand corner and then apply your zoom factor. For myself, I'm using 1.4 and just to make sure that my bowl is centered correctly, I use the X and Y axis to make sure that the bowl is centered in the frame. Now suppose you want to replicate this for other clips in your timeline. It's going to be really time consuming and tedious to go into each clip and then adjust the zoom and X and Y axis. Believe me, I used to do that in the very beginning. It was really painful. The easiest way to copy and paste the same zoom and X and Y factors is by first right clicking on the clip that already has it applied and then select the clip that you want to apply it to and then right click and then paste attributes. Then check the box where it says video attributes until everything gets checked and then just hit apply and voila, all the factors have been applied. The video has been zoomed in properly. The next thing I want to cover is dynamic zoom. This by far I think is the coolest feature. This feature gives the illusion as if you're zooming in with your camera. You can either zoom in or zoom out and then there are many different styles of zooming in and out like ease in or ease out. To do this, first thing you want to do is select the clip that you want to apply dynamic zoom to. Once it's selected, all you need to do is turn on dynamic zoom. That's how simple it is. And then here's what it looks like. By default, it's going to zoom out. But if you click on the swap button, which is on the right hand side, then it's going to start zooming inwards. Then there are also different styles of dynamic zoom. You have ease in, which actually zooms in, and then you have ease out, which zooms out. The only difference is the ease in and out style is a little bit different than linear. The next thing I want to talk about is making titles. Every video needs a title, right? Or is that just me? making titles. I hope not. If you Google DaVinci Resolve fancy titles, you should be able to find more fancier and 3D versions of the titles. I'm going to show you how to make very basic titles that I use for my videos. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the toolbox is open. It should be on your left hand side of the screen. If it's not open, then click on effects library in DaVinci Resolve. Then you want to go into titles and then click on text, drag and bring it into your timeline. Next, you can adjust the timeline and make sure that your text is according to your like the very first thing I like to do when editing text is change the font. So choose your favorite font and apply that. Next, we're going to type the text that we want to apply there. So in this case, I'm going to type in onion rings as that's the title of my video. Another tip is to space out your text. This makes your overall title look a lot nicer. You can also play with the font size and make it bigger or smaller. And finally, you can apply a background to it. I like to use a transparent background. All you need to do is adjust the height and width and then it's all looking good now. And just to show you from the beginning, here's what my title looks like from the very beginning. Lastly, I want to go over color grading. There are many ways to color grade. I'm no pro at it, but I keep adjusting stuff until it starts looking good to me. For color grading, I mainly play with the highlights, the color boost, the contrast, saturation and the color reveals. In this case, what I want to do is enhance the video quality, make the image look brighter and more appetizing. So the very first thing I do is increase the highlight on the image. Then I go to the color boost. This step increases the saturation of the video. Then I like to increase the contrast to my liking and also play with the saturation. At this point, the onion rings are looking orangish, so I need to tone that down a little. To tone it down, I again change the color boost, reduce that number, and then my onion rings are looking more natural now. If there are any pro editors watching right now, they're probably going crazy as I'm doing everything in one node. I'm just doing that for the simplicity of this tutorial. And here's a full screen of color grading the video. Here's a before. And here's an after color grading. I hope you found this tutorial useful for your editing needs. I hope it was simple enough for you to understand and apply to your videos. There are many steps that I didn't show in this one as I wanted this to be a very high level basic how to edit videos guide. Do let me know in the comments below what things I should touch up on again if I do plan on making the second video. Until next time, look at this final product for the onion rings and enjoy this b-roll.